Hey, what's happening, guys? Hollywood Bless. Hollywood here. Hollywood Bless 2911. Uh, Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, X Power Lifter. Um, X Power Lifter. I'm going to talk about that. Um, 50 year old over the middle age mark bodybuilder <laughs> and uh, personal trainer NASM certified personal trainer guys corrective ex exercise specialist and aspi aspiring doctor of physical therapy um so guys I want to talk about power lifting um, and what it did for me um I had a had a guy, a uh, friend, who has been powerlifting. He's been around ever since I, you know, I did it for about I don't know eight to ten years. And you know, if there was a powerlifting meet most of the time, um, at least I don't know over at least half of them, if not you know more than that. And I was at. You know, I know two or three for sure. Um, he was there. And, uh, you know, I remember when the guy had started. I don't know if he started, but I remember when I started, you know, he was powerlifting. And, you know, he had went on to, you know, get real fired up, dedicated about powerlifting. And, you know, had, uh, you know, was ranked very highly in the world. And, Started his own gym and has trained several powerlifters. And, um, you know, over the years, um, and I saw him post today on social media about how, you know, what part of powerlifting is good for you. And he put, you know, and he had, you know, it was like color coded, and it? it was funny because none of the color, none of the color. Um, you know, that you know, where you got the color in the box and it says what well, part of it's good for you and he has the little pie with the colors in them and none of them are the same colors. <laughs> and so and I saw him post last night, you know, he's gonna eat three meals a day, he's gonna work out three times a week, and he's not gonna be stressed out anymore about this, that and the other. I'm real happy about that and real happy to see that, you know, he is actually um, you know, um, accepted the fact, um, you know, that, um, you know, his, you know, he did real well in powerlifting, whether he decides to do it again or not do it again, um, you know, either way, you know, he's still a, one hell of a great guy, and, uh, you know, and he really did well in the sport and in this area, um, you know, for encouraging people to do it and in his gym. I mean, I always like to watch the highlights and stuff of him and his gym and, you know, him and his girlfriend. Um, you know, their stuff's just real fun to watch. Really, you know, um, charismatic people up there, and I really enjoy, um, you know, the entertainment aspect of it as well as, you know, whenever he uh, he competed. So, big shout-out to Dustin there, um, you know, for coming out and saying that. Might <laughs> be trying to convince himself of it, but anyhow. Um, so for me, man, you know, and I can write that man, and, you know, the same thing. I can agree with that, but I have been injured um, every single powerlifting meet that I was in. That I was in, I had a serious injury, except for the very first one. Now the second one, I had a serious injury in. Um, but I won, uh, and it was probably one of, you know, it was one of the two most serious injuries I've had, uh, which it was the injury, I think, that caught, now knowing what I know now, um, you know, through my, you know, study in kinesiology and, you know, uh, sports medicine, um, which it was the injury that ended up causing all the other stuff. Um, it's your body's a genetic chain, man. You know, you, it, it can only be as strong as its weakest link. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, um, I tore my rotator cuff. I think it was because of high dehydration at the Tennessee State Championships in three different places. 
I've never had surgery. Um, I kept competing with it like that. Uh, you know, I think I, at the time, you know, I was benching over 400 pounds, and um, I actually did that with 400 pounds, you know, and um, had been doing that for quite a while. Um, so even though, you know, I competed, did real well in the squat and the deadlift, and, you know, overall I did real well. Um, I, um, you know, it took several years, I'm thinking, probably six years before I was even close to 400 pounds again. Um, you know, so I never, I did, I made just a very little progress in, you know, all the years that I competed in, um, but I still did well, um, you know, because I was just kind of where I was at. Um, but anyway, man, you know, you talk about powerlifting and what it did and, and what part of it was good for me. Uh, when I first started powerlifting, man, um, you know, I was just going to be a pro wrestler, and it, it was just kind of a joke. Um, you know, and Jesse Rogers and some of those old powerlifters worked out the same gym I did. The guys from the Southern Powerlifting Federation. And me and a buddy of mine. We wanted to be pro wrestlers, man. We were bouncers at a bar, and we wanted to be pro wrestlers. So I never done anything like that, man. I, like I say, I fought a little tough, man. Um, you know, back when, uh, you know, back when my, in my mid to late twenties, and um, you know, I did some mixed martial arts, MMA, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I'd done martial arts growing up around. You know, never ran. I've always worked out. I mean, that was my deal. Um, you know, I train, but I never really, you know, besides for having the Arnold Schwarzenegger Encyclopedia, big book of bodybuilding, um, I, you know, I wasn't a big bodybuilding fan, and I really didn't know much at all about powerlifting. First time I heard about it was a friend of mine, Big Tave Cog. Um, used to be a big, you know, you used to watch old Anthony Clark, man, back whenever he was, you know, um, ripping and roaring, big, uh, big Hawaiian guy, man, I had the bench press record for several years, um, but anyway, you know, so we were just, we wanted to be pro wrestlers, and maybe it's just going to be a gimmick for pro wrestling, right, um, and so, you know, I asked Jesse, um, you know, how to, how do I, you know, become a powerlifter, how do we get into powerlifting, um, and he said, well, that's easy. You know, he said, you just pay me, and I signed you up. He um, he signed me up. Well, he didn't sign me up at first, which is a crazy thing because, you know, Jesse is one of these men who, you know, will hold on to, to a dollar until he gets another one, you know, and hold on to them until he gets another one, you know, right? Um, and sell the one for three times the price of the other one. Um, used uh, so I mean you know I dealt with you know just the way he was which just kind of shows me man that it was really meant to be from the very beginning um, you know but uh, yeah, I didn't pay him and he came in the next day and you know his first thing was he said hey man he said um, he said if you want to join that me or he said if you want to compete he said I'll work it out with you I always kind of felt something about this because he used to sit there and watch me when I was lifting. It's kind of like he knew something, man. But, um, anyway, uh, so he, you know, the next day he said, man, he said, if you give me $30, man, um, he said, um, I'll work something out with you, man. He said, you can pay me 30 when you get your next check and, and I'll work out, you know, I'll, I'll, when you pay your membership, you know, by the time the meet is and everything, you can start getting ready. And I mean, he said, I'll bring you some meat wraps and I'll show you how to put them on. And um, he said, and I'll bring you a singlet. Um, you know, and you know, so I give him 30 bucks, man. And the next day, you know, he comes in with this box full of stuff. He's got wraps, everything. Ends are, I mean, Jesse Rogers, he owned the Southern Powerlifting Federation for 25 years or whatever. Um, but anyway, he, uh, so he took and he, um, he had this box full of stuff, full of knee wraps and, um, 
you know, singlet. So he gave me the singlet. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking he was wanting 25 bucks for it. I don't even remember. But I remember he gave me the wraps. I still got them today. First set of wraps, I scored 700 pounds. In. And he said, I'm going to show you, you know, and he, he gave them to me. He said, there, he said, you're yours, man. Um, he said, Andrew, Andrew um, sends him this stuff to try, um, you know, and he had a pair of three back or whatever. And so I gave them to me. They were brand new. And um said, I'm gonna show you how to I'm gonna show you how to put them on one time. And he said, That's it. I said, Alright, you know, and so he he showed me how to put them on and everything. Um, you know. And uh, I still have those rhymes. Anyway, I mean it, it's a it's kind of a hell of a story. I mean and then, but that's part of it, you know, because the way Jesse is with his money and with his business, it's just kind of amazing, you know, that he was reaching his hand out to me. Um, you know, looking back at it now, I didn't know Jesse then, um, but looking back at it now, you know, he, he reached his hand out to, to help me out. Um, and, you know, and it's kind of the basis of, of, you know, where I ended up. But, so, he, um, he, uh, you know, I didn't have a belt either. You know, we didn't have a belt. And, um, you know, so I told Carter. And Carter, the guy that owns the fitness factory where we trained at. Um, and if anybody knows Carter, same thing. I mean, he will hold a nickel so long that the date in Thomas Jefferson's face will be imprinted in his hand for a day or two. Um, you know, because he was just one of these guys that just didn't spend money like that. He hung on to every penny he could. Um, you know, and if you owed him money, he was after you and he spent as less as he possibly could. You know, he was a guy who tripped about his money. Um, you know, and, uh, I told him, I said, hey. I said, man, you know, I just, you know, when I put the wraps on, I think, I don't know that day, man, I might have squatted 405 five times or something. It kind of tripped me out that, you know, I was able to do that because we hadn't been doing that. No belt, no wraps. We hadn't been squatting like that. Um, I could have done more, but, I mean, I was just, we hadn't been. And so, anyhow, so he, um, he says, you don't have a belt? He says, come here, man. He said, I'll get you one. And I'm like, man, I don't have any money, man. I mean, I was working in a warehouse at the time. Um, you know, hell, man, I was trying to sober up. I'd been drinking. You know, that was right at the tail end of my drinking career. And, you know, I lost my good job and I had to take another job because of a, you know, a situation with a girl at work. And, um, you know, my son was just now, I think my son had already gone to boot camp, but he had already gone to boot camp. Um, so, you know, I'd been raising my kids, man, and, you know, and now, you know, it's just, I, things were tight, real tight, man. You know, I had a sports car that, you know, was costing me everything that I made, um, but anyway, um, so he says, hey, I'll buy you a belt, man, and I'm like, what, man, you gonna buy a belt, man? He said, look, he said, man, I get you a belt, man, when you get the money, he said, then you pay me. Um, you know, he said, you can pay me on, like you pay your membership, you, however you want to pay it. You want to pay me $5 a month, pay me $5 a month. I'm like, okay, man, cool. Um, you know, so, and looking back at it, those were the biggest miracles of the whole thing. That You know, those, just those two guys, how they helped me out. You know, when those are the two most unlikely people to volunteer um, you know, to give money to anybody or help anybody out with anything, um, you know, could just because of the way they are with money. Um, but anyway, so, you know, we get the belt, man, and, you know, I end up, you know, doing real well, man. I, you know, I, I think that, and when, as soon as I got it, I think I was out squatting everybody at the gym. And then my first mate, um, you know, I squatted 600 pounds, and, um, you know, I think I got 1,500 my very first name. Um, but you know, I never was a 2,000 pound toddler. I never got up there. I kept getting hurt. And, you know, eventually I squatted 715 pounds in a meet and 
my bench did get back up to 390 never felt the same never pulled I pulled 610 pounds one time and but I pulled 600 I don't even know I'm probably going there and pull 600 right now um you know but um you know moral of the story is yeah I got hurt in powerlifting and yeah um it wasn't good for my body and it beat the shit out of my body um you know and I'm still paying for it um but you know, like I say, um, you know, at the time, you know, I was trying to quit drinking. I, you know, I, I was fresh out of that deal, um, you know, and I was training. I was getting focused, you know, when I started focusing on powerlifting, you know, so I was around more powerlifters, um, you know, which was a more positive environment for me to be in, you know. Um, I started, you know, following uh Stan Efferding and the vertical diet, man, and listening to his, you know, nutrition and, um, you know, and training advice, well, his nutrition advice, you know, for the most part, um, you know, and then I kept winning. I mean, I never lost, you know, out of just the seven meets I was in, I never lost. I kept winning them, um, you know, and then, um, you know, I had a real, another real serious injury. Um, and that's when, you know, I really, and, and this whole time, you know, that I'm powerlifting, that I'm focused on powerlifting, man, I'm not drinking and, and raising hell and uh, none of that stuff. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm keeping my nose staying clean, man. You know, um, I'm working powerlifting, uh, you know, I'm focused on powerlifting. That's all that I thought about, man. I never was a powerlifting fan. That's the thing. I never kept up with any powerlifters. I don't know who they are. Um, except for uh, Stan Efferding, you know, and I don't even remember how I stumbled across what he was saying or whatever, um, you know, the vertical diet and the steak and all that stuff, but it was a real, real good thing. It kept me out of the bars, man. It kept me focused. Um, it gave me a sense of accomplishment, um, you know, and then in 2018, uh, I got a coach, a coach coach. No, yeah, in 2018, I got hurt. And um, I tore an adductor magnus at, uh, bicep for more short head. Um, and, you know, my whole leg turned black. I didn't think I was going to be able to walk. Um, and, you know, it was a mess, man. I got carried out of there, um, you know, which is not good for me. Um, but what happened was I went to see Rachel Lawler at the grid house and, and Dustin was there too um, with her, working with her, working with me, um, you know, and they they assessed me, you know, and showed me some weaknesses that I had in my glute means, like a lot of people do, um, you know, and this is back in 2018, 2017, 2018, um, or 19, 18 before 19, right after grit months. Um, you know, and so I started doing the work. I started, you know, rehab. I'd wake up at three o'clock in the morning. I'd rehab my hips, man. I'd have my rice and my steak ready. You know, I'd get my, um, you know, bio gut healthy shake ready that, you know, was basically part of the suggestions of the vertical diet. And I'd do that every single day. You know, I'd do hydrants. I'd do clams. Um, I'd do lifts. Um, you know, and I'd do the stretching. I'd do the pigeon. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, I would sit, uh, you know, before all that stuff, I would sit and I would spend, uh, about 15 minutes, uh, well, 17 minutes, probably enough time to listen to Metallica Orion and Metallica, the Call of Cthulhu. Um, you know, and in my mind, I would envision an 800 pound squat, a 400 pound squat. 450 pound bench and a 700 pound pull um i and then i would um you know envision per, being a personal trainer having a couple clients and then i would envision you know being a physical therapist <clears throat> in the human anatomy and uh, you know so this went on man for you know through the years um you know from about 2018 to 2022, um, you know, and then 2018, I got a coach, Zach Sanders, and that just completely changed the game. 
Um, you know, and then it was in the next couple of years, you know, I was, you know, top 20. My squat was always top five. And, you know, for the 45 to 49 Masters, even with the weight that I was giving up. Um, but um, it gave me purpose. It gave me, a, you know, a, you know, now at this time, you know, hell, you look back and I got some years behind me without alcohol and you know and there's nobody in my life that is you know abusing substances or alcohol or anything at all or any kind of people that um you know i got, had gotten a relationship with a beautiful woman um connie Cawthon, um which was just just wonderful um you know right off the rip uh, she fell in love with powerlifting at the first meet she was at and you know just a good old country girl that knew nothing about <laughs> about lifting for sure um you know but just really really loved power lifting um you know and I, I was able to lift and and everything before she ever even got off work every day and hang out with her um so i mean um good stuff good stuff and um you know uh you know, and then it was that last year before, um, you know, um, got hurt. Um, I ended up doing, you know, it, when you're saying this stuff, when you're you're manifesting um, these things, um, you know, this stuff, your desires, you want to be very specific. You know, I did an 800-pound pin squat, or I did an 800-pound squat out of a rack that we had lowered. Now, um I don't want to hear, you know, somebody, you know, you know, I had a guy in here, man, who was barely, you know, who couldn't even squat 700 pounds in a multi-ply suit, three meter wraps, um, squatting it high and gassed out of his mind. So I don't want to hear nothing about um, my 800 pound raw squat, even though, you know, it was, you know, half mast out of a mono, okay? Because I wasn't being specific about it, but it still happened. And that's, you know, I didn't, I wasn't sitting there saying, you know, in my little mind, imagination saying, I want an 800 pound regular squat. I was saying, um, I want an 800 pound squat. Right? And so, and with the 450 pound bench, same thing with it, you know, uh, Coach Maddox, Anthony Maddox, who's, running a powerlifting in his own federation right now that he created um, today, uh, you know, called me up, you know, from the back when I was at the fitness factory one night and said, hey, Hollywood, try this out. You know, and I put on his little uh, a bench daddy and bench press 455 pounds, you know, um, and I pulled 700 pounds on a rack pull. Nothing regulation. But well, that's why I, I didn't ever say that, but it happened anyway, okay? Um, so you can argue with that or not, but that's out of the box thinking, right? Um, you know, I was focused on powerlifting. I was focused on me. I was focused on getting better. You know, I was working on me. I was looking at me. You know, I was working with somebody. Um, I was talking to, um, you know, a, a gal who... Um, you know, who was, you know, real spiritual because I, I contacted her. That was the last me, um, you know, because I wanted to, you know, see if I could get any weight, if I could add any weight on the bar, I had to get more spiritual. And I'm not talking about religious because, you know, she's into crystals and um, it was really recovery through childhood is what she was all about, you know, and and, and the, the power versus force. If, if you've ever heard any, um, if you ever want to read a book, read Power Versus Force by Dr. David Hawkins. Um, and it talks about, um, it talks about, um, you know, how these emotions, um, love, bliss, um, authenticity, um, you know, how much more powerful they are. Um, you know, then hate, anger, um, you know, shame, guilt, um, you know, that that's weakness. And these other emotions are actually on a higher energetic vibration 
I'm going to make you more powerful. And that's actually what happened. Um, you know, so I was working with her. And, um, you know, and by this time, man, you know, I'm all about it, you know, being a, a physical therapist. Because actually, that's what I've been doing. I've had to basically rehab my hips um, and prehab my hips every day um, for squatting the heavy weights. Um, you know, so, um, you know, I learned a lot about them, about hips, and I'm going to specialize in hips, man, and I have people come in here, um, you know, um, sad, depressed, angry, blah, 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 um, and we get down and we do some foam rolling, and um, we might, you know, if they're comfortable, put the stick on them on the hips and the glute needs, um, you know, and, uh, you know, they get up and walk, man, and a smile comes to their face, man, and they have hope once again. Or, you know, we mild fascia release that will roll the, the knees, you know, where they're sitting all the time. And, and it releases those bursa sacs from being swollen up um, where they're trying to protect the knees, you know, and then there's a smile on their face. So I can progress them to whatever fitness goals that they have because now they're happy. It works together, the limbic system and the nervous system, the musculatory system, and the skeletal system and the endocrine system all work together. But they start in the limbic system, right? But, and then it'll program the body, but then the body comes back and affects the limbic system. So the emotions need to be high. Happiness needs to be high. Pain-free needs to be number one. Um, you know, to be strong and powerful. And I could go on a soapbox about, you know, rapping and not rapping without a belt, uh, you know, not rapping and not wearing a belt and all this. And I used to do that, um, you know, but when I started training with Zach, he was just like, man, that's pointless, man. Um, you know, if you're in pain, you're not strong. If you're hurting, you're not strong. You're not proving anything. Um, <clears throat> and I got another coach. I coach with Josh. Um, Josh right up here, the walls of Jericho, and, you know, he's become a, you know, a, a good addition, um, you know, to, to my association with, you know, the fitness industry, um, as well as a friend, uh, but, I, you know, I ended up, you know, opening, having, getting a personal training business, becoming a NASM certified personal trainer, Academy of Sports Medicine, um, you know, corrective exercise specialist. Uh, you know, I've trained with probably a hundred people I've trained, you know, that have all been successful. Some of them had to move on for whatever reason. Um, some of them are still with me, you know. Um, I've learned from them. They've learned from me and we've done well. Uh, you know, and now I got this business, um, you know, and I'm pretty much set at least for the next year here, um, you know, to create and do whatever it is we want to do here. Um, so man, yeah, you know, powerlifting, um, I will agree, um, it wasn't healthy as far as, you know, beating my body up. And I never, de I didn't deserve that kind of punishment. Something made me feel like I deserved that kind of punishment. And I had that discussion, you know, with the spiritual advisor, um, you know, after the fact. Um, you know, that I was punishing myself for whatever reason that I felt like I needed punishment. Um, you know, uh, but I'm going to say, man, that it was really good for me. Um, it was exactly what I needed to put me on my road to where I am now. Um, you know, and, and, and being, uh, being an observer of my boy, um, it's done the same for him because he's got a, you know, beautiful wife, a flourishing business, and um, a lot of gym members and clients that really love him. Um, and he's helped me. I mean, he was part of the, the deal with me, um, you know, rehabbing, um, you know, my rehab in the very beginning. And he was one of the ones that, you know, where he was the one. He said, man, if I tried and I rehabbed my body when it was broke down like that, when I didn't think I'd walk. Um, he said I could be ready by next year to compete in Gritmas, and I did. And I squatted 700 pounds for the first time. Powerlifting was good, man. Um, you know, but I turned the page, man. Um, uh, not unless I'm facilitating powerlifting um, here and or training powerlifters.
That's all I got, man. Please like, subscribe, and share, guys.